I think 10 years ago, the greatest challenge still was costs and the higher generation costs of renewables and generally low carbon technologies. And I think this problem has disappeared to a large extent due to the ex success in terms of technology learning. Solar and wind are now almost competitive to con conventional generation technologies. And therefore, reducing the costs of renewable technologies is still important, but not the major challenge anymore. I think the challenges are now threefold. On the one hand, we need flexibility in the overall power system to integrate increasing shares of low carbon uh, technologies, and in particular renewable technologies. Therefore, both the demand side and the supply side need to become much more flexible and adapt to the varying patterns of renewable energy generation. Secondly, the issue is financing, low-cost financing. We foresee large capital expenditures for low-carbon technologies for the next decades, and the cost of the overall energy system and the energy transition will strongly depend on the financing needs and the cost of capital. And therefore, risks have to mitigate it by creating, for example, long-term contracts, etc., uh, in order to reduce the cost of capital and overall financing costs uh, to the limits possible. And thirdly, I think we have distributional challenges in the energy system. We uh, have in particular, uh, like in both or in all sectors, winners and losers. And uh, losers will be uh, probably the ones that are affected by the phase out of, of conventional assets. And those distributional issues will have to be managed in order to compensate potential losers of this energy transition and also the workforce and in order to mitigate potential social problems from these uh, distributional challenges. The uh, flexibility issue is one of the greatest challenges for the future and therefore I think in order to cope with the flexibility challenge we need to open balancing markets for the demand side and for renewables, currently balancing markets and also system services uh, are still provided to a large extent by conventional assets and this causes mass run capacity in the overall market and this reduces the flexibility of the system and the ability to integrate raising shares of renewable energy sources and therefore we have to reduce the um, pre-qualification pre pre criteria uh, of those type of markets for uh, the demand side and for renewable energy sources. Secondly, I think we have to integrate energy markets. Um, we have to integrate electricity, heating and transport. So we use the low carbon electricity also to heat our homes using heat pumps or to uh, drive our cars by electric vehicles. And integrating these energy markets is a substantial regulatory challenge due to the fact that uh, in many sectors there are levies and fees which prevent the use uh, or stronger use of electricity in these sectors in high efficient applications. And therefore, I think that is a challenge to be tackled and uh, a solution to be found. And uh, last but not least, um, I think we also have an acceptance issue uh, for certain flexibility options, in particular for large-scale transmission. It is uh, not often um, mentioned that transmission is really one of our greatest flexibility resources, and um, therefore we will have to expand tra uh, transmission capacity substantially. This is typically not an economic challenge, but an acceptance challenge, and I think policymakers, uh, scientists, and also regulators have to communicate this to the public in order to get acceptance for these type of solutions. I prefer to think of the next steps first. Um, we are currently in Europe heading a 40% renewable energy system, which is not a problem at all from my point of view. And I also think that we will be able to integrate 60, 80 percent, up to 90 percent of renewable energy sources into the electricity system. And uh, we will have to 
learn in the process, that would be a great adventure of innovation. And um, I'm, I really trust the engineers uh, and the great technicians uh, in our energy sector to solve those issues. And once we have reached 90%, which I consider fully likely, we will also manage the last steps in order to integrate the last uh, bits of renewable energy sources. And then probably we will need other storage and integration technologies, then hydrogen will come in probably to a larger extent, etc. Uh, but these are challenges which don't have to be solved today, but uh, are for the future. And we have 20 years of engineering, innovation, and uh, research and development. And I'm quite confident that we'll manage to do that, yes. It certainly helps, yes. Um, I'm not sure whether it will be sufficient. I think generally it is a good package, the overall energy union governance and the winter package. It contains many good elements. I'm not sure whether the ambition level is sufficient for the Paris climate agreements. I actually don't think so. Um, I think actually uh, we would have to increase our carbon emission targets uh, at least to 45%, which would then give also some room to increase the renewables and energy efficiency target. And I really would like to emphasize that we are not only talking about the target for the year 2050, but also about the carbon budget on the path towards 2050. Uh, in Paris, we agreed on uh, two or up to 1.5 degree uh, maximum temperature increase and the carbon budget we have left in order to reach to 1.5 degrees is so low that the ambition level of the greenhouse gas mitigation in Europe should be increased and I think that is an important issue to be negotiated now in the trialogue between Parliament and the Council.